In the late 1930s, with the possibility of a global conflict on the horizon, the U.S. Army Air Corps sought a new long-range bomber that could surpass the capabilities of the B-17 Flying Fortress. Boeing stepped up to the challenge and in 1940, began the development of what would become the B-29 Superfortress. The B-29 was a technological marvel of its time. Powered by four Ryder 3350 duplex cyclone radial engines, it could reach a top speed of over 350 miles per hour and had a range of up to 3,250 miles, allowing it to strike targets deep within enemy territory. It also had a service ceiling of 31,850 feet, enabling it to fly higher than most enemy fighters and anti-aircraft guns. The Superfortress boasted an array of innovations that set it apart from its predecessors. It featured a pressurized cabin for its 11 crew members, remote-controlled gun turrets, and an advanced analog fire control system. This allowed the B-29 to maintain a high degree of accuracy while keeping its crew safe and comfortable during long missions. The B-29's first operational mission took place in June 1944, targeting Japanese-held islands in the Pacific. The Superfortress quickly became the backbone of the U.S. strategic bombing campaign against Japan, proving its worth in a variety of roles, from high-altitude precision bombing to low-level incendiary raids. Initially, B-29s were based in China and India, where they carried out high-altitude bombing missions against targets in Japan. However, these missions face logistical challenges, due to the long distances involved and the need to transport fuel and supplies over the treacherous Himalayas, known as the Hump. In late 1944, after the U.S. captured the Mariana Islands, B-29s were relocated to bases on Saipan, Tinian, and Guam. This strategic move allowed the U.S. to launch more frequent and effective raids on Japan's industrial heartland. The Marianas bases became the primary staging areas for the B-29's campaign against Japan, which intensified during 1945. One of the most famous B-29 missions was Operation Meeting House, which took place on the night of March 9, 1945. Over 300 B-29s dropped incendiary bombs on Tokyo, creating a massive firestorm that devastated the city and killed an estimated 100,000 people. This marked a shift in tactics, as the U.S. moved away from precision bombing to area bombing, using incendiary and fragmentation bombs to target urban areas and destroy Japan's war industry. Throughout the spring and summer of 1945, B-29s conducted numerous large-scale bombing raids on major Japanese cities, including Osaka, Nagoya, and Yokohama. These devastating attacks significantly weakened Japan's industrial capabilities, contributing to the country's eventual surrender. The B-29 is perhaps best known for its role in the atomic bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki, which ultimately led to Japan's surrender in the end of World War II. The two specially modified B-29s, the Enola Gay and Boxcar, delivered the atomic bombs Little Boy and Fat Man, demonstrating the immense destructive power of this new weapon, and the B-29's ability to deliver it. During its World War II service, the B-29 proved to be a highly versatile and effective aircraft, despite facing various technical and logistical challenges. Its capabilities in long-range bombing and high-altitude operations, allowed the U.S. to strike deep into enemy territory and bring the war to the Japanese homeland, ultimately playing a crucial role in the Allied victory. After World War II, the B-29 continued to serve in the U.S. military, playing a crucial role in the early stages of the Cold War. It was used for various purposes, including reconnaissance, weather observation, and refueling other aircraft. When the Korean War broke out in 1950, the B-29 was once again called upon for combat missions. Although it was no longer a cutting-edge aircraft, the Superfortress still proved effective in the conflict, carrying out a significant number of bombing and reconnaissance missions. At the start of the war, B-29s were primarily tasked with interdiction missions, targeting North Korean supply lines, transportation infrastructure, and airfields. These raids aimed to hinder the enemy's ability to move troops and supplies, as well as limit their air capabilities. In November 1950, B-29s participated in the strategic bombing campaign against North Korea, focusing on industrial targets, 
including hydroelectric plants, factories, and refineries. This campaign aimed to cripple North Korea's war industry and hasten an end to the conflict. The B-29 faced new challenges during the Korean War, as advanced Soviet-designed MiG-15 fighters posed a significant threat to the aging bomber. The MiG-15 was faster and more maneuverable than the B-29, and its 37mm and 23mm cannons could inflict heavy damage. In response, B-29s were often escorted by American jet fighters, such as the F-86 Sabre, and relied on nighttime operations to minimize the risk from enemy fighters. Despite these challenges, the Superfortress performed admirably in its role as a bomber and reconnaissance platform. It played a vital part in the strategic bombing campaign, as well as providing valuable intelligence for ground forces through aerial photography and mapping. As the Korean War progressed, the B-29 was gradually replaced by more modern jet-powered bombers, such as the B-47 Stratojet. By the end of the war in 1953, the B-29's days as a frontline bomber were numbered. However, its contribution to the war effort should not be overlooked, as it played a significant role in shaping the course of the conflict. The last B-29s were retired from active service in the late 1950s, but their legacy lived on. A total of 3,970 B-29s were produced, and many have been preserved in museums and as monuments, serving as a testament to their role in shaping the course of history. The B-29's influence can be seen in the design of many later aircraft, including its direct successor, the B-50 Superfortress, and the iconic B-52 Stratofortress. Its groundbreaking technology set the stage for the development of high-altitude, long-range bombers that would define the strategic bombing campaigns of the Cold War and beyond. An interesting and lesser-known aspect of the B-29's legacy is its connection to the Soviet Union. During World War II, several B-29s were forced to make emergency landings in Soviet territory, after bombing raids on Japan. Due to the Soviet Union's neutrality in the conflict with Japan at that time, they interned the American crews and impounded the aircraft. Soviet leader Joseph Stalin saw an opportunity in these captured B-29s. He ordered the development of an exact copy of the Superfortress, to bridge the gap in the Soviet Union's strategic bomber capabilities. This ambitious project was led by the Tupolev Design Bureau, and the resulting aircraft was designated as the Tu-4, nicknamed the Bull. The Superfortress's impact on the outcome of World War II is undeniable. Its role in the bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki, remains a source of debate and reflection to this day as it marked the dawn of the atomic age and changed the course of warfare forever.